This is Divine Lifestyles with Tara Magalski. What is a divine lifestyle? Passion, purpose, and living in alignment with your truth. Welcome to Divine Lifestyles, feeding your spirit, mind, and body. I'm your host, Tara Magalski, and today's guest is the beautiful Tennille Amour. Tennille is a singer-songwriter, philanthropist, public speaker, writer, actor, movement maker, role model, and Tennille Amour is more than music. Her brand is steadily growing across a number of platforms and her desire to unite people of every race, class, and creed around the world is what fuels her passionate drive. Not only is Tennille an amazing innovator and change maker, she is also my dear friend. So thanks T for joining me today. For sure, thank you for having me. Yeah, I knew we had to collaborate sometime <laughs> soon. Yeah. So. T, there's so much that we have to cover today. We've got to cover your music. We've got to cover the Amor movement, epic, God, life, everything. So let's just get right in it. For sure. Let's go. Let's do it. Well, I just want to tell everybody that Tennille's music is actually a fusion of Main Street pop, meaningful hip hop, and her soulful reggae roots. She's originally from Trinidad, and Tennille has lived all over the world, including Scotland, Egypt, Singapore, and England. So let's start there, T. Tell everybody a little bit about growing up as a world wild, uh, world wild, world yeah. wild child. World wild child. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even say it. World wild child. <laughs> I like world wild child. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's I mean, what you really are, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I guess that's just a big part of my backstory is the fact that I've lived all over the place. I've had exposure to so many different cultures, um, been um, exposed, I guess, to so many different ways of life. And that has definitely influenced my sound, my music, the type of things that I write about. Uh, my family, like you said, is from Trinidad. So Trinidad's my roots. I'm actually heading back there next month for Carnival to, to promote a song that I just put out. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's definitely part of, of my history. And I think that living all over the world is what gave me the inspiration to do everything that I'm doing, not only with my music, but with Epic as well, that you obviously know a lot about too, and we'll talk about later. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, let's talk about your new album because I know that's what you're promoting right now. And you wrote 19 of the 20 songs, right? I did. Yeah. Actually, the last song got added at the very last minute. And um, I'm super excited about that one. It's actually a mm -hmm. collaboration with Shaggy, um, who has been very helpful with my album and, and with just the entire process of, of this transition that I went through finding that sound, my sound. Yeah. Uh, and so actually one of my really good friends, one of the producers on the album as well, GC is the one who, who wrote this song for Shaggy and I, he does a lot of work with Shaggy, but every other song on the album I wrote and even that one is, is so me. I, w I would never sing something that wasn't me, which is why I write the majority of my stuff. Yeah. But, and like yeah. I've always told you T, to me, you're a lyricist always okay. like first and foremost. Thank You've you. always been able to write, and I'll never forget, you know, I'm just going to uh, drop into the story really quick. When we went to Africa a couple of years ago, you wrote a song in like three minutes <laughs> and recorded it. And I was like, what? <laughs> I forgot you were there for that. Yeah, 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 of course, of course. Yeah, that was a really, really fun experience. That was in Tanzania at that, at that random studio, Hole in the Wall studio. Yeah. That was really fun. Yeah, I mean, lyrics are very important to me. It, they are very, all of my lyrics are true to life. They're very mm -hmm. much me and my journey and what I've been through. And I think that exactly. lyrics are such a healing part of the process of, for any artist. Uh, so they, they definitely mean a lot to me. And, and I think that this album, it's called Evolve Through Love. And it, it takes the listener through the many stages of love, not just romantic love, but heartache, pain, um, very, you know, emotional times, friendship, uh, lust, and then coming to, to an understanding of a deeper type of love, unconditional love or one love, if you, if you 
get yeah. my gist. <laughs> yeah. No, I get you. Um, let's just tell everyone a little bit about the some of the major artists that you've worked with. Um, uh, you have worked pretty much with with a lot of big names. You uh, co-wrote a song with Pixie Lot. You win with John Legend. Yeah. You've worked with, I mean, a number of other talented artists. Um, who was um, your favorite artist to work with? Uh, wow. Man, it's really hard because every situation is, is obviously different and beautiful in its own way. Pixie was great to work with just because she's like my little sister, so it was really fun being able to work with her. John Legend, good friend of mine for many years, so it was nice to be able to bring them together and, and have them collaborate for her album. Um, but Shaggy, Shaggy is such a great friend as well and, and such a great part of my musical journey, so mm -hmm. I'd have to say that working with him has been probably the, the most... I guess the the thing that's caused me the most growth on my journey. So I'd have to say that that has been probably the most exciting experience for me. Uh, Jay Ivy is also on the album. Jay is another dear friend of mine who's so incredibly talented. He's putting out a book right now called Dear Father, which is mm. phenomenal. It's going to be amazing. Um, Chris Young is on the album as well. Chris Young is another great friend of mine who is incredible with lyrics, talking about lyricists. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just so great to be able to... Bungie Garland. Bungie yeah. Garland is, is the next single, is the single that I'm promoting right now. And Bungie, funnily enough, he and I have never actually even met in person. We're going to meet this, this time that I go to Trinidad. But just talking to him and, and working with him over, over, you know, the, the few weeks that we've been working together to, to put out this song and to record this song. It's just been really incredible, too, to meet someone, not even meet them in person, but yeah. cyber meet them <laughs> and be able to collaborate on something like that. So music's so cool in that sense that it really allows people to work together in ways that they maybe would never work together before. So, yeah, yeah. I have to say, I've noticed that as well with you um, working with Shaggy. I think that your new album is really authentic and it really shows how far you've come on your musical journey. Thank you. So, you know, being so accomplished as you are, um, I would love if we can just get real right now and just talk about some of the challenges that you have faced during this journey. Sure, yeah. I mean, there are many <laughs> daily. <laughs> yeah, what specifically do you want to know? <laughs> so if you had, um, well, I know you. So um, yeah. um, <laughs> for the people that don't know you, what was a catalyst moment that you had in your life or a time in your life where it really, you know, kicked off that transformation for you? I think that... Um, I think that a big transition point in my life probably happened almost two years ago now um, where I just decided that I wanted to become super clear with what I was doing and, and put more focus and energy into the direction of my, of my music and, and just of my life's path. And so that was a time where I decided to become completely sober and transition from not taking full, I guess, full responsibility for, for everything that was happening, happening in my life that I didn't like or the things that were, were adding to my life in a negative way. And I think I just had this, not I think, I definitely did. I had a, a wake-up call, multiple wake-up calls, but one that really was, was a transition point of me being like, all right, well, now is the time. If I'm really going to do this, now is the time for me to get super clear yeah, and yeah. and super focused and not leave room for anything that would be taking away from what my purpose in life is. So it was a definite transition point for me and I've seen immense growth and and things have moved so much more quickly with that with that clearer mm -hmm. state of mind and that new focus. So yeah, I would say that that, that was a big moment. I think that was probably probably the thing that you were thinking about yeah, <laughs> asking the yeah. question that um 
Yeah. yeah. And I just, um, you have a song that is my favorite. Um, it's not out yet, but we'll just tell them a little bit about it. And it's called Fly. And um, it is at the intro of this podcast. And yeah. it is probably one of the most, I think, authentic, heartfelt songs that you have. It's kind of you exposing yourself, I think, musically for the first time. Yeah, I think that... In, in that sense. Yeah, it's a, it's a ballad, so it's definitely a more heartfelt. Not not to say that the you know up tempo songs are not heartfelt as well, but I agree, it's definitely a very vulnerable song. It's definitely um, it was it was written actually at a time where where I wasn't yet out of or where I am now as far as mm -hmm. evolved in into this place on my journey, but. I guess in a way it was it was written as a conversation to God and and just trying to find that strength within me to be able to get through any of the difficult times that that I was facing and and find those wings to be able to just fly in in a metaphorical sense through mm -hmm. the the difficulties that I was facing at that time. So, yeah, I mean it's one of my favorite songs too. It's not out yet as mm -hmm. you said. But um, but I'm excited for that one, and I and I think that that one will definitely have have some pretty big wings, for lack of a, <laughs> of a better way of saying it. Yeah, and you know I'd love for you to just share with us a little bit about the evolution of your music and how important does faith play a role in that? Yeah, um, faith is very important to me for sure, as you know. Um, the music has evolved in, in a massive way. I think that this album, it's so funny because, you know, you keep saying your new album and, and really it's my first album. And the reason why you're calling it my new album is because I've been working on it for so long. And it's because I've heard all your music for so many years that I'm like, she's always doing something. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> I mean, truthfully, I could have put put out maybe three or four albums at this point and, and I'm such a perfectionist, which is one of the, the bad parts of my personality in the sense of, you know, I, I hold on to things for so long that now that I'm putting out my first album, you know, and you're referring it to, to the new album because there's so much other content and older <laughs> content that didn't make it onto the album. Even though there are 20 songs on the album, there are multiple songs that didn't make it on. And... Um, and it's just because I have been going through an evolution and a journey, and that's why it is called Evolve Through Love. And so I think that what I've learned in this process, multiple things, but one of the things that I've learned is the importance of just sharing content and, and not being as critical and overly analytical as I usually am about things and being like, oh, it's not time yet. I'm, you know, I got it, got it. But at the same time, I you actually gave me a magnet that is still on my fridge that, <laughs> um, that talks about recognizing that where we are at this present moment in time is exactly where we're supposed to be. And that every part, every step of the journey was important to get us to this point. So, mm. you know, that's where faith plays a big part in it too, is understanding that there's a bigger plan than what we can even see or understand at times. And so at times we may feel like, you know, why aren't things moving faster or yeah. why, why have I not reached where I thought I would be yet? Or, you know, and then we have to start questioning, like, where is it that, that we think will be, you know, where, where do we think we need to get to before we can say, I'm happy, you know, this journey is incredible and I'm so thankful for every step of it. So that's been a big process for me too. And just being so thankful for the evolution that this album has provided and for the journey that it's provided and for the lessons that it's provided, the people that I've met, the experiences that I've had have all contributed to what I feel extremely proud to be able to now share with mm -hmm. everyone who's putting out the album. So it's been such a phenomenal experience, even without putting it out or without sharing it. For me personally, internally, I've grown so much. And it is a blessing to be able to now share that with, with whoever wants to hear it. I love it. Love. It's like your coming out party. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so let's get into Epic because cool. 
Epic is amazing. It's an amazing organization, a nonprofit, everyday people initiating change. Tell everybody about Epic and what, because um, I know that this year you have a fellowship program. So let us all know what's going on with Epic. Yeah, well, Epic is Everyday People Initiating Change. And Alexi Panos, who you also know, Alexi and I started mm -hmm. Epic together. I think about eight years ago now when yeah. we knew absolutely nothing about nonprofits. We knew nothing about Africa. Well, some things about Africa, but, but definitely not to the extent of obviously what we know now. Uh, we didn't know what, what we would face when we went there. And we went in completely blind, but with just a passion and a desire to want to go in there and, and want to do something positive with, with our lives. And so when Alexi and I met, we were both involved in entertainment. We believed that that would be our platform to be able to do something eventually. But we realized, you know, why, why is it that we're waiting for this opportunity, this moment where we feel like we have enough of whatever it is that we feel like we need to do something? Why don't we just do something now? So that's where the whole name came from, Epic, mm -hmm. being everyday people initiating change. And that's where we just decided to go out and see what it was that, that we could help with. And we work directly with the local people, as you know. Mm -hmm. We ask them what it is that, that we can do to better their lives. We don't come in with the Western agenda of what we think we need to do to, to better our perception of their lives. Uh, we actually really go in and, and, and try and work directly with people who who are on the ground and, and who understand the needs of the people more than we could understand them. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've come to really grow with these communities and, and we've got a family out there who we consider to be our family and they, they feel the same about us. Um, we actually, Lex and I decided, one of the little boys who, who we've watched grow up we actually decided personally, not through Epic, but to send him to school this year. So we just got word that he just started school, uh, secondary school. Mm. And so there are little things that we're able to do within the communities that provide long-term growth and, and, and meaning within, within the villages. But through Epic, what we love to do is allow other people to experience what we've been able to experience through being there, being on the ground. Because it's one thing to tell people, you know, this is what we're doing and we need mm -hmm. some support, financial support to help with mainly what Epic does is we drill clean water wells in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I guess I should have said that first, but I forget because you know all about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's what we do mainly. And so it's, it's all about, you know, drilling the clean water wells. It's about community growth within each of these villages after the wells have been drilled. And, and again, it's so great, obviously, to be able to get that support from people here in the States and, and all around the world who support the projects that we're doing. But at the same time, as you know, it's such a different experience when you're actually able to come out and see it for yourself, yourself. So... With Absolutely. Program, yeah. With the fellowship program, what Alexi and I decided to do is make people not only or allow people not only to come out and experience it, but also allow them to fundraise before they come out so that their contribution can go towards the drilling of that well also. Mm -hmm. So that has been really great because we've seen such a such a huge impact that, that that has been making on on the lives of everyone who comes out and experiences that and contributes to that you your group came out and and did an amazing an amazing trip with us that that really was eye-opening in so many ways and and you know i think that your group was the first group i think that did your group contribute to i think i think you guys did i'm not sure yeah, well, um, we fundraised a little bit before, and then um, it was a lot of stuff like when we got back and exactly, yeah, exactly. So, well, with but it the was new sorry. Sorry, go ahead, sweetie. With the new <laughs> fellowship program, um, you know, we're we're really opening it up this year. We're going to be doing six trips this year, which is a lot more than we've ever done. Uh, we've only ever done one per year, but we realize that this is a great way for us to not only allow people to come out and experience it, but another way for us to sustain the projects that we're doing in Tanzania. So we're trying a program for six six trips this year, mm -hmm. three months in total. 
Um, and then next year we're looking to expand even further. So it's, it's really a great time for Epic, a great time for Alexi and I and, and individually and with what we're doing with the Epic. So we feel really ready to be able to now expand what we've been doing for so many years. Yeah, so just quickly tell everyone where they can check out more information about Epic and donate if they would like. Yeah, Epic is epicthemovement.org. I'm sure you can put a little something on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I will. Um, and yeah, I just want to say that it was absolutely one of the most interesting transformational times of my life going yeah. out there and spending the 22 days with you guys and the team. And I really look forward to be part of um, the team this year and help running some of the groups for you girls. So, for sure. Well, well, yeah, no, the growth is, is definitely, you know, happening and you have been such a huge part of that. So we thank you for that, too. Oh, of course. Right. It, just like you said, though, you don't you hear it. I heard you girls from the very beginning when. We've been friends since you started Epic, and it was always like, oh, come to the fundraisers. We all supported. But I didn't really know. Right. I saw your pictures. I saw your videos. We fundraised. But I didn't really know until I was there experiencing it for myself. No, of course. Yeah. It's a completely different experience. And that's what's so great is in starting this program, the fellowship program, it's, it's a great way for, like I said, for us to allow more people to be able to come out and experience it. And we want to keep the group small, too, so that, as you saw as well, it's nice to have that intimacy because you really get to know the people within your group, mm -hmm. and we become family by the end of it. Mm -hmm. So we like that, too. We like that people are able to, to bond within the groups because they're very small. But with that being said, having more trips this year is going to allow for us to, to be able to let more people come because we always have so many more people than than what we're able to bring out that apply to come out with us so yeah it's Let, gonna be yeah I'm super excited yeah. so tell me what is the Amor movement the Amor movement is something that I started it stands for artists motivating optimistic revolution and the vision behind that is I have so many friends who are in the arts, whether it's music, film, um, fashion, the visual arts, and so many of them are so passionate about some of the same things that I'm passionate about. And the main focus of, of the work that we're doing is, is trying to bring some sort of positive light to the world through our work. Mm -hmm. So for me, the Amor movement was created to try and bring people, like-minded people who are in the arts, whatever, whatever that may be, together to be able to collaborate and to be able to, um, to share whatever it is that they have with mm -hmm. one another order to, to build one another up and, and bring their work to light. So basically it's, for example, I could say if I came to, to the Amore platform to, to say, okay, well, I am doing an album, for example, and I need a producer, but I don't have a budget for a producer, but I really would love to work with someone who understands my vision and has a similar vision as me. I could come to the Amore movement, essentially the, the online platform that will exist. It doesn't exist yet, but mm -hmm. it will exist. Um, and, and I could find a producer on there that would be perfect for my needs, or if I need a manager or a lawyer, or, you know, you could come on there and share resources with one another in order to, to do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, in another sense, the, I'm doing an Amore tour that goes along with that. And what that is, it's going to eventually become a yearly festival. But this year, what I would like to do is, is four different shows one in New York, one in London, one in LA, and one in Trinidad to help, one, fundraise for Epic, but also have amazing performers, people that, that I've known over the years, some who are famous and extremely successful, others who are building their careers, all come together to perform to raise money for a great cause. So that's another aspect of the Amore movement. The Amore movement will also be merchandise and, and um, multiple different platforms to be able to get out that message of artists motivating optimistic revolution. So I love that's, it. yeah, that's the vision behind that. And it, again, it's in its early stages, but you know, something worth mentioning because it's definitely something that within the next 
few years is a massive focal point of where I'm at with everything. That's amazing. And I do want to just talk about where you're at with investment in the brand, just in case anyone is listening that knows someone that could possibly um, help out. So, yeah. So please talk about where you are with the stages for investment. Well, right now, actually, it's funny because funny you mention it because I'm actually in the process of putting together the business plan to, to be able to show two potential investors. But, um, but yeah, if anyone is interested, I would love for you to contact me. I'm sure you can do it either through this platform that you're providing or reach out to Tara, reach out to me directly through my website. But I need, I need people who understand the long-term vision and who want to get behind something that will hopefully be, leave a positive impact on this world. So, yeah. Yeah. So tell me what inspired, what is it, God, what is it that inspires you to have such a positive impact in the world? Like, how do you know that you are doing your purpose? You are living your purpose. I think, I think that, um, it's, I can't remember who was asking me the other day, someone, a friend of mine who was saying that they weren't sure if they were if they were doing what they what they think their life life is supposed to be about, and mm -hmm. and it's funny because for me I have been extremely fortunate, very blessed to know from such a young age what I was supposed to do with my life, and I can only attribute that to God and a connection to God and and knowing what God's purpose is for my life, and and the interesting thing about that is. With that, we have to be open to allow ourselves to be led in whatever direction mm -hmm. God wants us to go in. And sometimes that's not the direction that we thought we knew or the direction that we envisioned or the, you know, exactly the direction that we want or, or think we want at the time. And so again, this journey has been a very long journey and it's nowhere near over yet. And I guess the biggest part of it for me is just trusting that, like I said, with the magnet that you gave me, that every single part of that journey is exactly what it's supposed to be at that time. So I don't have any preconceptions about what it has to look like, what the end result has mm -hmm. to look like. I do have an idea of what I think it will look like, not even necessarily the end result, but I have a very clear vision of where I'm going and a very clear vision of the path that I'm on. But I'm also open to the twists and turns that it's gonna take along the way, and I'm cool with that, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that, that with that being said, within me, I've, I've reflected, I've, I've thought about it so many times and question it so many times to know that what I'm doing is exactly what I need to be doing and what I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't have any doubt in my mind mm -hmm. that, that that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and it's comes from your relationship. I think, you know, I think the whole, that's the point. It comes from your relationship with God that you have such a deep knowing that you are exactly where you need to be. Yeah. You know, I've, and in all your projects, it has <laughs> such that through line of, of light. And I just want to talk a little bit about um, something that you wrote was really beautiful for the vision for your brand. Mm. And that was that Tenille Amore will be one of the leaders in the conscious movement of light and love that is becoming recognized as being of the utmost importance in a time when our world is vastly divided and in need of tremendous healing. That was really, really powerful. So I just wanted to read that for anyone who's watching or listening. And your spiritual grounding and foundation is, has been what has kept you humble. And I just think that's a really important thing that we must focus on, right? We have to surrender sometimes our own will a bit, know that God put the desires in our heart, and he's going to show us the way. Definitely. Yeah. And it, I think that comes back to, I was listening to a really incredible sermon last night, actually, <clears throat> from Mosaic in LA. But Oh, really? I just went last week. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an online sermon and I just, you know, sometimes, mm -hmm. and you know, I have to say, like, I don't, I don't believe that you have to 
go to church or, or, or you know, I, I think that spirituality or connection to God can come in so many different forms, forms and ways. And, and, and I believe that different people experience it, obviously, in, in many different ways. For me personally, I, I don't go to church every week and I don't, you know, I don't do certain things that, that maybe other people would consider to be the way to have a relationship with God. But I do have a very strong connection exactly. with God, and and I randomly have nights like last night where I'm like, huh, let me listen to some sermons and get connected and have a moment with just me and, and God, and and so that was what I did last night, and and the message was so relevant because it talked about it was called now or never, and it talked mm. about when. Maybe you were there. I don't know if this was live. No, you know what? Every week they live stream. So I was there last Wednesday for okay. midweek. Okay. So the, the sermon was talking about if we're not happy where we are right now, we never will be because even if we have all the things that we think that we want, you know, all the things that we think we need to be happy, when we get to that point, we're still not happy because we want more things. So... Yeah. And I was looking at it in in relation to my career and this journey and the album and launching it. And I'm so hard on myself because I want so much for this to be successful and for, you know, for it to, to do well. And, and as we all do with whatever it is that we're pursuing or doing, and especially if, you know, we have drive and ambition and, and mm -hmm. we're motivated and we see a big vision for, for what we want for our future. And, and so again, like that is where ego starts to come in in a way. And we have to kind of reflect on that and yeah. say, well, am I doing this for me or am I doing it for, for my purpose or what I believe my purpose to be? And if it's for my purpose, then I need to be able to say, okay, well, it's going exactly where it's supposed to go right now. I can't want it to be any bigger than it is or want it to be any further along than it is because this is where I'm supposed to be because this is where I am. This is where I am right now. And I will never be happy if I keep looking to the future for my happiness. We have to be able to look at where we are right now and say, look at all these amazing things that I have. Look at all of these wonderful things that I've been able to accomplish, the people that I've been yeah. able to meet, the, the, um, the difference that I've been able to make in, in people's lives that I don't even know I've made a difference in their lives for the most part. Th those are the things that we have to look at and say where I am right now is a place that I can be extremely happy if I choose to be. I don't have to look to that future me that future self, that future more accomplished version of myself mm -hmm. to say that's when I'm going to be happy. So because it was... You really, you're, when you really take that time to sit down though, T, you realize, wow, I've accomplished a lot. I've actually, you know, talking about you and even myself, we've accomplished yeah. a lot. Sure. But sure. because we are ambitious and because we have these visions, right? It's like it's never enough. And that's where we can get caught. And that's where you get like the hamster in the wheel. Totally. And you never really get to just sit back and allow God's will to move through you a bit more. Definitely. And it's interesting because yeah. I just wrote about that. I actually shot a video about this, uh, surrendering your will versus your ego. And mm -hmm. it was all about that, how I feel the same way. Like, oh my God, do I have enough likes on Facebook? Am I Instagramming enough? Am I doing this? And it's like craziness. And I'm like, why am I getting caught up in this ego-driven world? I need to step back, realize I'm going to use social media for a bigger purpose, have, get clear with my message, and just let it come. You know, everything is a building block. Completely. Yeah, and that's it. Like, it's about, there. and again, there's nothing wrong. I've, the past couple of years have been interesting for me, too, because the last year was the first year that I really asked for help with my music. I did my pledge. I launched mm -hmm. my pledge campaign, which was pledge is an on pledge. Music is an online campaign similar to Kickstarter for those of you who don't know pledge music. But um, that was such a huge thing for me to do because I've never asked for help before, especially financial help from anyone within my world or my community. And, and, and 
that was very, very humbling because it was the first time of me saying, listen, I can't do this. I've been able to do it for so many years without that help. And I, and I self fund what I do. And I've also worked with amazing people who believe in what I'm doing. And I've been able to work with them just believing in the vision and, and not asking for payment for certain things. But you come to a certain point in your career and, and in your life of where in order to get things done right, you need money to get it done, yeah. done the way that it needs to get done. So that was the first time of me actually like stepping out in faith and saying, I need help. Is there anyone out there that can help me? And mm -hmm. seeing this overflowing abundance of, of love and support that came in that was really incredible that allowed me to then say, okay, right, this is, this is the way to move forward with what I'm doing. And now I'm at the stage where I need even more help again, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's this ongoing process, but I'm finally at the point of understanding that it's okay to need help with things. It's also okay to, to um, strive for things, but it's the motivation behind the striving that we need to look at and say, okay, well, why am I doing what it's I'm It's your why. I was just about to yeah. say that. You took it yeah. right out of my mouth. It's the yeah. why. Yeah. Right. Any great movement comes from the why people get on board because of the why. Yeah. It's you know? so true. And, and that is where I realized within these past, uh, maybe even within the past year, six months that I know that my motivation comes from a good place. I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I know that in order for me to make the impact that I that I would like to make and that I believe I'm supposed to make, I need certain things to, to facilitate that and that's okay. But yeah. it's about, like you said, keeping ourselves in check and, and saying, it doesn't matter how many people like the picture on Instagram or mm -hmm. the, the post on Facebook, none of that matters. What matters is that you're operating from, that we're operating from a place of truth and from a place of, of purpose mm -hmm. and that's all that matters. And then whoever's supposed to see it will see it, like it will exactly. like it, hear it will hear it. I, one of my biggest influences is Lauren Hill and mm -hmm. I love her her um, her message. Everything about her is is something that, that I admire and, and respect because as a female in the entertainment industry, she has done things that, that in my opinion, no other female is really doing. But her MTV Unplugged album, not the Miseducation of Lauren Hill, but the Unplugged album is really, she shows so much vulnerability through that album because she not only is singing, but she's also sharing just thoughts that come to her in between each of the songs. And one of the things she says, she's like, I know that my message maybe cryptic. I know that, that for some people it's going to just basically go over, go over their head. She doesn't say that, but, but in other words, mm -hmm. and she says, but I trust that those who are supposed to hear it will hear it and get something from it. And mm -hmm. I sit and I listen to that album. I'm like, me, I'm supposed to hear it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, exactly. And, yeah. And <laughs> the reason that I was fortunate enough to be able to, to meet her and, and tell her that and share that with her. But until that time, she didn't know that it impacted me or had, had any sort of mm -hmm. reach me in any sort of way. So that always stays with me that we don't know who it is that we could potentially be reaching or touching. And, and the important thing is to just really stay authentic be ourselves, share what we can with whoever it is that we feel we're able to share it with. And those who are supposed to hear it are going to hear it. And whoever else, I mean, that's not really up to us. Yeah. So what tips can you offer someone who's struggling, someone who really doesn't know their way, someone who's really looking to find their purpose, their passion, their divine lifestyle? I think that what's important to, to share here is that we're all struggling. Like we all, we're all in the same boat. So for me to sit here and say, I don't have days where I, where I, mm -hmm. I know I said earlier, you know, I never doubt what my purpose is. And I never, that isn't fully true because there are days that I sit and I wonder like, well, wait, shouldn't I be further along or shouldn't this have happened or shouldn't, you know, I do have days of doubt and I do have massively low days, not, not as low as what they used to be because I no longer have the massive highs and lows that come from 
substances, you know, yeah. but, but just on an, a human level and on an emotional level, we're all humans. We go through, through different stages of, of highs and lows. And mm -hmm. again, in the sermon that I was listening to, he was saying, sometimes those can happen in the same day, like at one oh, moment, yeah. day, you know, one moment in the day, it could be like, yeah, man, like this, things are going so well and I'm crushing mm -hmm. it. Everything's happening exactly the way that it's supposed to. And then 10 minutes later, we could be like, oh my God, why is it not, you know, what's going on? Why? And, and that's just part no, of it. It comes down to the computer not working this morning. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Frustrations of, of, man, nothing is going right. Could anything yeah. else possibly go wrong? And, and so there are going to be moments like that. And I think that one of the best things that, that we can do is li the little things, literally like the little steps every day to work towards yes. whatever it is that we're trying to work towards. So I have a friend of mine, a friend of yours too. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we have decided that every day we, we write down, or we do three things at least every day that works towards our careers. I love it. So, um, and we hold each other accountable. So I have to send them to him and he sends them to me. And, and every day we keep track and, and say, okay, well, today I did X, Y, Z, literally three things or more, which they often end to, tend to be more because what you, what you find is that when you sit down to start working on things towards your career, you're going to do the three and then they'll be like, oh man, I also need to do this and that and the other thing. Mm -hmm. And then you find yourself doing so many things working towards what it is that you actually want to do rather than losing yourself on Facebook, losing yourself by watching mm -hmm. TV, losing yourself by getting involved in all these other things that take away from what you really should be doing. So I think that, that that's a really good place to start is say every single day, I'm going to do three things at least that are working towards what I want to be doing with my life. And but what if somebody doesn't really have a direction at all? Okay. What if somebody doesn't have really any clue and they're like, I think I like these areas, but I'm not sure which area to go in. Just from your personal experience, like what has helped you define your purpose? I would say, you know, it's, it's, difficult really for me in the sense of I have been fortunate in in kind of knowing I haven't really changed my my purpose hasn't really changed throughout the years like from even from a very young age as a kid I, I kind of just knew mm. and you know this is what I will say I'll say probably the best place to start is to go back to childhood go back to where you were as a kid when you didn't have the weight of the world on your shoulders mm -hmm. and where you didn't have you know all of these society placing all these expectations on you of what you should be doing go back to that childhood place and remember what you wanted to be and what you wanted to do mm -hmm. when you were a child and and i think that that's a great place to start because what happens is when we grow up, we forget, we forget, mm -hmm. that, you know, we forget the dream that was born in us when we were so young. And, and when we, you know, when we didn't have the weight of the world on our shoulders, when we weren't worried about money, when we weren't worried about all of the things that, that obviously are extremely important and necessary in order to survive. But there's another great, um, I forget who, who said it, but there, I can't remember who said it, but basically it's, you know, what would you do if money were no object? So if you didn't have to exactly. work, <laughs> if, you know, if you won the lottery tomorrow, that's why I say this too, to, to mm -hmm. all friends, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently? What in your life would change? Yeah. And I have this thing that I do. It's like when you were eight years old or before you were eight years old, what were those things if you can remember that you always wanted to be? Yeah. Because around like eight to 10, you start getting into like the pre-teening, I got to be cool years, <laughs> but you're super pure and wholesome all those years. And you have all these desires in your heart. You can remember them. Exactly. You know, like from five to eight, I remember very clearly four or five, not so much, but yeah, I really remember what was placed in my heart. It's true. And, uh, I think that's a good place. And you said it, that's a really great place to start. Yeah, no, and, and it's funny because I remember, I was nine, I remember it. So you're, you're, you know, the age thing, what you're saying is, is true for me, that, that 
I was nine years old and I remember, I don't know why I wrote it on a ping pong ball, but I have <laughs> a ping pong ball and for some reason with a Sharpie, I wrote on a ping pong ball what I wanted to do with my life and, and I'm doing it. So I, I, it's funny because I still have that ping pong ball with the date and with, you know, love it. Little scribblings, but yeah, I was nine. And so I think that that is a great place to start to, to try to really reflect on the inner child and, and, and find that voice again and have the faith to really go with it, to trust it, and to know that it is possible to do what, what that child wanted to do and what that child dreamed of doing. Because I think that fear always steps in and fear always tells us that there's no way that that's possible. It's, it's a stupid dream. How could you ever think that that could, could possibly work out? And you know what? Maybe it won't. And, and the thing about it is that and the thing that I always think about is that I will stop doing what I'm doing the minute I feel like one, I'm no longer progressing or two, I'm no longer enjoying it. Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing about this journey is that I love it. I've been able to mm -hmm. do something that I love for so many years and granted, no, my name may not be on billboards. I may not have the, you know, when my album comes out, I doubt it's going to be number one on iTunes, but guess what? That's okay. Because my journey is happening the way that it's supposed to happen. And everything that's happening has been so great for me. I've had so much fun and I met phenomenal yeah. people and I'm doing what I love. So that's, that's success. I, that is success. That is success. That's what I think success is. Well, your journey has been super courageous and I'm honored to call you my friend. And yes. you know that I am your biggest fan. <laughs> I love you so much. I love you too. But please let everybody know where they can hear more of your music and where they can connect with you online. Yeah, well, um, my website is currently under construction. I don't know when this goes out, but hopefully it will be up by the time it goes out. Uh, but tanilamore.com. And then on Facebook, you can find me. Tanila Moore is where you can find me on Facebook. You guys can do the little thing at the bottom so that people can know how to spell my name. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm Tanila Lamar on every platform. So you can see videos on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I'm pretty active on all those sites. So yeah, f find those. Then look for the single, I Want Your Love, featuring Bungie Garland. That's about to come out too. Shooting a video for that in Trinidad next month that I'm super excited about. So yeah, let's push that out and buy the album, support, support the vision, support the process, um, evolve through love. It's definitely worth your money, 20 songs worth your money. <laughs> um, and, and just my journey, sharing my journey. Well, thank you, my spirit sister. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> thank you, this was fun. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe to this channel to get your weekly fix for all you spiritual gangsters. Any questions or comments, go to my site at taramagalski.com. Drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you and stay tuned for next week. I got the good stuff. <laughs>